Hello and welcome to the That Guy Guide for playing Warhammer 40k. So if you are that guy or would like to become that guy, I thought we'd go through a few simple steps to asserting your dominance over your hobby group. Some people play Warhammer for fun or to make friends, but if those things aren't particularly important to you, then this video might be of some help. First of all, let's talk about mustering our forces. This can be a much quicker process for that guy than most, seeing as you don't really need to think too hard about unit selection, you can just make a carbon copy of a list that was won multiple tournaments. If any unit is considered to be breaking the game right now, in the list it must go. At time of recording, Space Marines with a lot of Gravis armor or Harlequins might do you fine. Certainly don't worry if you hate the look or feel of the models, that's not really important compared with crushing your foes beneath your feet. Once you've bought all the models, I'd assemble around about 80% of it. In games, people really won't mind too much if there's a few tank turrets missing off, or some infantry models are missing their arms or a head. Be sure to try and gain any advantage that you can while assembly, such as having characters have enormous bases for extra aura size, and if you have any tall models that are wanting to hide out of line of sight, I'd try and make sure that they lie down or clip off all the top bits, as this will give you some more advantages in-game. Many people describe Warhammer 40k as a hobby that you can paint in, but that's something for other people to invest their time and effort into, and your great hide of miniatures will sweep them off the table just as well. Now we've got our forces together, we can think about preparing for a game. It's important not to bathe or shower in the previous 72 hours before a game, there's no reason to give your opponent the advantage of clean air, which might allow them to make better tactical decisions. When you're arranging a game, I don't try and organise a casual narrative game, as this might wrongfoot your opponent into not bringing the strongest list that they have available, and the trick is that you can easily forge a narrative for the most overpowered units in 40k if you really put your mind to it. Your chapter can just be one that's really into eradicators, and your apothecaries can specialise in bike repair as they resurrect your invader ATVs. If you know the player that you'll be playing, it would be silly not to use all prior knowledge of the foe to your advantage. That is what your army would do in real life after all, so if you know that they're playing a tank heavy army, I'd bring almost nothing but anti-tank weapons, and if you know that they like infantry more, then bring anti-horde shots galore. They will certainly be impressed that you've tailored a proper list to counter their best efforts. When you are writing a proper army list, remember that the points total is a goal but not all that strict. It's generally expected that every list will be around about 50 to 100 points over, most opponents won't really mind about this, and even better, they might have no opportunity to mind if you don't give them an army list to show them. Just roughly talk through your options, writing everything down or putting it in battle scribe takes time or effort that you don't need to do. Finally, if you don't have the exact miniatures available, there's nothing wrong with proxying a few things, particularly if you've assembled all of your models with no arms, who really knows what guns they have? Certainly not your opponent when you announce that halfway through the game these guys actually have melter weapons and are going to kill your tank. When you do turn up to your game, remember that winning is absolutely everything. Things like friendly conversation or getting to know your opponent won't help with this. Playing model soldiers is a serious endeavour and should always be treated as such. It's important to keep well fed while playing. I recommend eating crisps. You might get a bit of salt and grease on your hands, but don't worry, you can easily wipe those off on the opponent's models at every opportunity. When you're in-game and rolling dice, remember that cocked dice should always be re-rolled if you don't like the result, but otherwise they can stay. And if you ever do make any bad rolls in the game, then loudly proclaim how unlucky you are every time anything is slightly below average. When moving your miniatures, measurements can be done from either the back or the front of the base. Say with this Space Marine Gladiator tank on the right here, you can move it forward 10 inches, measuring from the front of the base, and then put the back of the base at the point that you've measured. That way you'll gain a whole load of movement, because you gain the entire width of the model's base as well. 40k is a complex game, and rules disputes do happen from time to time. Just remember that every single time you have any sort of rules debate with your opponent, you absolutely need to win it, and nothing short of multiple other people being asked around the room to confirm that you're wrong should be a reason to back down. It is quite easy to win rules debates about your own miniatures if you don't happen to bring your own codex, that way it's very hard to confirm or deny whatever you're saying about your miniatures is correct. Alternatively, if the rules are at hand for some reason, make sure every time your opponent questions a rule, you spend a very very good long time looking it up, and have them watch you slowly and painfully thumb through the rulebook every time they ask you a question. They'll probably learn to avoid questioning you in the near future. If you forget any actions, or need to take back any mistakes that you did, weaker opponents constrained by common courtesy, or just a more laid-back attitude, will generally be quite obliging. This can be another way to gain an advantage over them, as if they make any small sequencing error and forget to do an obvious action, you are under no obligation to treat them in the same way. From here, it really does depend on whether the game is going well or not. If it is going well, then make sure to celebrate your success vocally. 
You are clearly demonstrating your incredible generalship and army building skills, and in no part is your success ever the result of good luck or a good matchup. Your opponent will certainly be keen to learn of their errors, so you can trash talk your opponent's faction or choice of units, say how they were never going to work, and demonstrate your in-depth knowledge about the game. If it is going really well, then don't allow your opponent to concede under any circumstances, you need to drag this out for as long as possible, even if it's clear that your opponent has absolutely no chance of winning. On the other hand though, if the game isn't going so well, and horror of horror you might find that you might be losing, there are quite a few options and tricks that you can deploy. Firstly, it's important to not let the winning player get any sort of satisfaction or happiness out of their win. I try and grow progressively more sulky, and make it clear to the other player just how little you are enjoying the game, and that should really take the wind out of their sails. Aggressively discuss game balance issues, and just how OP and cheesy the opponent's faction is, and try and paint them out as a win at all cost try hard player, and make them feel as guilty as possible for the way that the game has gone. Sometimes you can deploy these tactics very early, at the first slightest setback that you're not doing well in a game, conceding at the bottom of turn 1 after a couple of units have died, muttering about quitting 40k, and bonus points for actually binning your army on the way out. The other tack that you could take though to actually try and prevent a defeat, is just to ensure that the game does not end. If you think that you're on the back foot, suddenly remember that you have somewhere else to be very very urgently, either to meet a friend, or to do some urgent piece of housework, and declare the game to be a draw that you would have really liked to carry on playing. Otherwise, you can just progressively play slower and slower throughout the game, taking 5 minutes over every single decision, and rolling each of your dice one at a time, until your opponent eventually loses interest. All the better if you're under the time constraints of a tournament, a victory is still a victory, even if you only got to the end of turn 2. Using this excellent sequence of recommendations, you might beat everyone once with this strategy, though you may find that you struggle to get quite as many games in, the more a player group gets familiar with you. This is because they are in awe of your skill and your Warhammer abilities, and they know not to challenge you if it's going to be a foregone conclusion. Once you have literally no players to play against you in your local gaming store, then you have won, and you should be very pleased in your victory. From there you can continue to challenge newer players in your store, as soon as they've picked up a starter set, break out your meta-breaking tournament list, and absolutely go to town on their fledgling forces, showing them just how powerful an army in 40k can be. Every victory is sweet, and a hopelessly mismatched matchup is just one way that you can help get more victories. So I hope you've enjoyed a full summary of how to be referred to as that guy in Warhammer 40k, though to be honest I'd hope that not too many people follow these rules to the letter quite so closely. If there's anything important that I've missed out that that guy should be doing, then please let me know down in the comments, I'm sure I'll have fun having a read through later. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more 40k tactics guides, which are a bit more serious in nature, feel free to subscribe to the channel, we have new videos coming out pretty much every day. Finally, if you would like to help support the channel and keep these videos coming, I would just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which can be found down in the video description. Making all this content does take a fair amount of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, such as seeing certain new videos early, automatic entry to the regular channel prize giveaways, and the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.